Hello everyone, how's it going? Even before I start my video, I want to bring your notice to the disaster that Cyclone Amphan has brought to my home state of West Bengal. With coronavirus cases already starting to pick up, this was the last thing that anyone was expecting. While my relatives are going on about their lives without mobile phones, Wi-Fi, electricity and clean water for the past three days, thousands in the coastal areas of Sundarbans have lost the roof over their heads and hundreds more have lost their lives. And that number keeps on increasing. I don't know when you will be watching this video, whether it's 2020 or 2025, but I dedicate this video to all those who are fighting to bring West Bengal back to its natural self. I pray for the people of West Bengal. I hope you do too. Thank you. Hi everyone. This is Arjun. So let's start with the first question. What is USCE, United States Clinical Experience? Oh, this is a very commonly asked question. Like what is an observership a elective or what is an externship? So anything which you do here in the United States, anything which is clinically related, let's say where you get to see some patients, there is some sort of a patient interaction will be considered as USCE. Now there are several grades of USCE while electives are considered the best where you function as a um, final year medical student but observerships and externships are also considered as United States clinical, clinical experience. Yes. So yeah, let's talk about like what's the purpose of having USCE. Now, it's very important to understand that United States as a country and as a healthcare system is quite different from the rest of the world. You might be a great doctor back in India, Pakistan, Egypt but you are trying to do your residency here in the States. So you must know the system out and out. For doing that, you need to have some prior clinical experience. Like it's preferable that you have this, especially here in the United States. Now the best way to do this is to come here as a medical student during your final year and have some electives. Otherwise, if you have already graduated, you can do observerships or externships. Try to understand the system here in the United States, they use electronic medical records or EMRs. So that might be something new. It was something new for me. Second is building contacts. That is also equally important. Where you do your electives matters a lot. So you get to know people, you get to talk to other students, both international as well as American graduates who are going to go through their own process and talk to you about like what you should do, like how you should take the steps and what are the preparation materials you should use. Ultimately, USC leads to you knowing someone in the United States and if they like you, they are going to write you letters of recommendations or LORs, which are really important for your application process for residency. Yeah, so one more advantage which I forgot to mention is step to CS. While you are doing your United States uh, clinical experience, be it observerships or electives, you are here physically, right? So you get to meet several students and other people who are like staying near you maybe or in, you met them in the library. So you can practice together for US, uh, like USMLE really step to CS, doing my electives. And uh, after that, I took my step to CS, like immediately after my electives. And uh, I was well adjusted, I would say. So without my electives and even with the equal amount of preparation, I would, have, I would say that it would have been a little bit difficult. So of course, having some USC helps with the final exam. A very common question which is asked is, how is observerships and externships different from electives? Now, it's very easy. Like as long as you are a medical student and you haven't graduated and received your degree, you can take part in medical electives as a medical student. So as soon as you graduate, you do observerships or externships. Now, apart from this being the case, there is a very important difference that is patient contact. As long as you're a student, the universities will ask you hey, I require your dean's letter, letter of recommendation, prove that you are still a student. And they will ask you for some sort of a malpractice insurance, which either you will have to buy or they will provide. Now, if that's not the case, then when you have already graduated, you cannot really see them as a doctor because you don't have the license to do that. When you come here as a student, then you are a student and you can perform physical examination, have access to patient data. But when you come here as a doctor after graduation, then you don't have the license to perform that so you cannot do physical exams you cannot write them notes so it becomes a little bit difficult in an observership so when you are in an observership you might be only asked to present a case but 
when you're presenting the case, the only information you have is the resident or the fellow have printed for you. So yeah, it's kind of a difficult situation for observers, but that also depends from place to place. Some places they are more relaxed about the rules. Other places are going to be like more strict. They are not going to let you enter the patient's room or like not going to give you access to any sort of patient data. So you will have to only participate in rounds and answer questions which the attending is asking. So it becomes difficult once you graduate to get observerships and once you get it to perform well in those observerships. So it's always better that you come in the United States as a student. One of the things which I have the most difficulty with is how to find electives. Now it's quite simple actually. If you, I'm going to try to share my screen, my laptop screen, if you open up Google and you type visiting medical student electives and then give a space and like let's say you type Cleveland Clinic or LSU or Thomas Jefferson or whatever you want then if the institution is participating in visiting electives for like international students they will usually show that page right up but if you are trying to go to a university's website and trying to find out like elective page, page from there you will not be able to do that because the websites are not that well designed usually apart from that the easier way is to like refer to some sort of a list so i what i will try to do is i will try to mention my electives like where i did them and uh, of course i had like met a few people who did their electives at other places so i will also try to list them so that you can go directly to their page and try to find out if they are providing electives to international medical students. Something which often creates a lot of frustration among, among international medical students is how long before do I apply? Now, it's usually six to eight months before your elective start date. Let's say you want to go in October. So you should apply around March, maybe early February. So there are certain dates which the like website would mention, let's say, elective application for Cleveland Clinic opens around April 15th for the month of October. So you should try to apply on April 15th if that's a online application. Let's say LSU will say we are going to accept application after June 1st. So you need to send your mail, mail packet uh, as in like post after June 1st. Naturally the question arises what are the requirements for these electives? So if I remember correctly, some institutions asked for USMLE Step 1 score, others asked for TOEFL, then immunization report, TB test, IGRA or a skin test. Some will ask for a letter of recommendation from your home institution. Now let me explain this quickly. USMLE Step 1 scorecard. So you will need this 6 to 8 months before your elective date. So that requires like a lot of preparation like uh, some of you might start your preparation in your final year of medical school. Now that is going to be difficult. So you cannot take step one just by two months of preparation unless you are a genius or something. And after you take step one, it takes another one month to get your scorecard. After that, you can apply. So plan before and uh, apply widely, I would say. So TOEFL is quite easy on that aspect. A lot of people take it. I will try to make a dedicated video on how to like take TOEFL and prepare for it. Uh, immunization in case if you have lost your immunization records it's very essential that you get titers or antibody tests let's say in case if you want to check if you have received your hepatitis b vaccination and you don't remember so you can get the hbsab antibody not antigen and uh, if the titers are like good enough and strong enough then you don't have to repeat the whole vaccination thing but in case if you're missing missing the details then you might have to take a varicella vaccine or a MMR or a hepatitis B, the whole series, I would say. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind because that's time consuming and takes quite a lot of money to get it done. Uh, the TB test, that can be taken care of most likely in your own institution. But in case if you just want to be sure that if you, you don't have TB, try to get the IGRA. It's quite sensitive for picking up like even latent infections. And uh, the LOR, yeah. So for the LOR, I would ask you to get it from the dean or the principal of the institu institution because that helps in a couple of ways. First of all, he or she is going to sign your form. And the second thing is most likely you will apply for residency and will require other documents for that particular person to sign. So it's better that you build up some sort of a reputation while you're applying for the elective so that later on they can write you a good LOR as well as like sign those documents and the whole process becomes easier. 
another question which i often get is how many months of electives is ideal now there is no certain rule or number to this but usually people end up doing two months to three months now if you don't get an elective you should try to do as much observership as you can but also try to remember that the main point of doing an elective like the introduction to this video is to trying to understand the united states health system as well as to build contacts and to get lors people who are recommending you people who have seen you work your work ethics and know that you are a good person and will recommend you during your application process so although there is no correct answer preferably try to do two to three months of electives especially in the subspecialty which you are applying to does elective in one specialty help me in another specialty so let's say i did an elective in radio at university of massachusetts and i want to apply for internal medicine now if i did only radiology two months of radiology here in the united states and suddenly i decide i want to apply for internal medicine that looks bad and weak i would say that why did you change your decision like that is a question which will be asked in the interview if you get the interview and your letters of uh, your letter of recommendation writers are lor writers are going to be from radiology so why are you applying to internal medicine so maybe for pediatrics and internal medicine it might be an interchange but for specialties like surgery if you want to apply to surgery and you only have let's say radiology experience now that doesn't look good but at the same time if you have some internal medicine experience and you got the radiology elective as an extra elective and you wanted to try that out so in that case getting an lor from another specialty doesn't look bad but if you only have experience in that specialty and you are applying to something else that doesn't look particularly good in your application one of the complaints which i often get is i don't have my usmle step 1 am i eligible to do electives now this is very difficult some of the people if not majority of the people will come to decide about their career during the final year of their med school where they are deciding whether i should stay in pakistan or india or should i go and to the united states and try the healthcare system over there so by that time when you realize that maybe i should go abroad and try it for myself and like see how is it you don't have enough time to prepare for step 1 so you need to take 6 to 8 months to beforehand to apply for electives now this is very difficult why i am saying this is without your step 1 your options are really limited now over the top of my head i can remember university of alabama birmingham alabama and emory these are the two places which allow electives without step 1 maybe with a toefl or a proof that you have received your medical education in english but apart from these places like the number of places are really limited when it comes to such opportunities just in case you don't have step 1 and you still want to go for electives you should try to find out if there are other places and uh, if i find other pla- other institutions or universities where step 1 without step 1 you can apply i will try to list them in the video description i know this video is being recorded in 2020 and like many of you might be watching this in the future and some institutions might have started to provide more electives others might have withdrawn so yeah be judicious about like where you are applying and also know that like when you apply to 10 15 places uh, i remember applying to 10 places and got rejected from 6 and that's quite a shock right so if you are thinking that you are going to apply to two places and they are going to accept you and that's not going to be the case and uh, rejection is a natural part of the process so to apply broadly because a lot of applicants are going to apply for the same spots in case if you are not interested in cardiology you should not apply to cardiology because a lot of people are going to be doing that because that's one of the highest paid specialty you don't know right that you want to become a cardiologist you want to try it for yourself do an elective but at the same time try to remember like less competitive specialties might be able to offer you more in the sense that your application might not be rejected let's say i know people who apply to infectious disease and got their applications accepted while i applied to uh, like more high demand specialty like cardiology or gastroenterology because i wanted to try them out and my application got rejected so, yeah so on facebook and messenger and also on whatsapp a lot of people ask me where i did my electives and i am going to be quite honest with you i did four so three before beginning of my internship year and one 
after like completing my internship year but before graduating i that is before receiving my degree in march 2018 that was a nephrology elective at thomas jefferson then uh, in april i did a radiology elective at umass i really liked it third elective which i did was at university of alabama and that was also a nephrology elective and um, like after that i came back to india finished my final year of medical school which is also known as internship like, and after doing my internship like before i did three after doing my internship i did one more so this was micu so micu is considered one of the more difficult uh, electives under internal medicine so what i will try to do is i will try to make another video where i go through my own personal experiences of my own electives what i did wrong what i liked what i disliked about that particular place and how i could have improved and like any feedback important feedback which i got from the residents and fellows i will try to share with you guys on the video so that you can have a better experience so this has been one of the most requested videos i guess because not so much is known about electives and how you should approach this whole subject and uh, i tried to like share my knowledge a lot of people have been really helpful to me i would like to mention about dr priyanka lakshmanan from kem uh, mumbai and dr Ro rohit nathani his junior from the same college so they really helped me out during my electives uh, application time so i was in final year rohit was also in final year and dr lakshmanan was doing her electives back then but they found out their own vital time from their schedule to help me out so i'm really grateful to them yeah at the same time so i know the value of receiving support from other people whom i don't don't know and that's the main point of making this youtube channel so that like this well kept secrets i would say becomes more easily available so that like people can find out more about like what they should do and how they should proceed with their whole career thank you